Senate Republicans are launching a committee to investigate Arizona's COVID-19 pandemic response. And I believe this will be the most important and most powerful committee hearing the Arizona State Senate has ever convened. The novel Coronavirus Southwestern Intergovernmental Committee is intended to shine a light on the mismanagement of the COVID-19 pandemic and expose all the atrocities committed during the pandemic response. To be very clear, when they say that atrocities were committed, they do not mean that policies were set up in a way that many people still got sick and died. In fact, according to what I'm seeing, 33,190 deaths in Arizona, one in 219 people died there. He, he doesn't mean that, they don't mean that. They just mean that people wore masks, there was social distancing, maybe it was locked down for 72 hours or something. And I have strong reason to suspect that. Because here is what this body that's gonna be looking into the atrocities is. It is a new state Senate body, the novel coronavirus Southwestern Intergovernmental Committee. Now, if that seems like a needlessly long tortured name for the committee, there's a reason for it. It's so that the acronym for it can be NCSWIC. Now, why would that matter? Well, to a normal person, it means nothing. But to QAnon people, it stands for nothing can stop what is coming. And the fact that this is an official investigative body by the state Senate of Arizona that is named to appeal to conspiracy theorists that believe that the government is run by Satanists who drink the blood of babies seems like it'd be a big deal. But I guess that's just Arizona at this point. Um, it apparently is used that acronym by QAnon people to say that nothing can stop basically the deep state being taken down. There is nothing these QAnon people love more than a vague acronym that they think properly stands in for a coherent worldview. Anyway, uh, they've got people who are coming in um, that you might consider pretty crazy, Paul Gosar, Andy Biggs. There are others too that might not be that bad. It's not like they're directly bringing in like, Q himself or anything, but it is clearly biased in that direction. I God only knows what they're gonna find, Brett, but we know it's gonna be crazy. I mean, what's so frustrating is like these folks have made it so much a part of their identity to use words like atrocity about like people just saying, like, can we try not to kill each other? And to them, that's an atrocity. When I look back on COVID, I remember you know, on the COVID lockdown and pandemic and, and everything that we put in place as a result of this disease. I have to remind myself like there were a lot of diseases that came into the media sphere previous to that like SARS and bird yeah. flu and swine flu that didn't result in this kind of a thing. So it's not like this knee jerk reaction of the entire state to just shut everything down. But this did kill an unprecedentedly high number of people. And in the wake of that, what you have to ask yourself what a reasonable person would do. A reasonable person would say, let's try not to kill everybody. And so they put it in place until they could, you know, if if the right wing is like, we gotta shut down immigration until we can figure out what the hell's going on. That's what America did. They shut down things until they could figure out what the hell was going on. Now, they're gonna go through and they're gonna find things that were actually mistakes that were mm -hmm. put in place by government. And that's fine. But I don't want the person in charge of labeling what's a mistake versus what's an atrocity to be the same person who uses QAnon acronyms to put together their freaking committee. I look at them, I know who they are. They are who we thought they were. They're telling us who they are every single day. These guys should not be the ones in charge of investigating this thing. Mm -hmm. These folks are unhinged psychopath Satanists. I'll say it, they're Satanists. Um, they're not uh, Satanists, why not like that? But um, yeah, yeah, look, they, they might find some ways that uh, the response was ineffective or whatever. But fundamentally, other than just the Q stuff, which already means that there's no point for this body. Um, they, you have to bear in mind, they did not want a more effective response, fundamentally. They didn't, want, like if they find A, B and C that weren't as effective as they could have been or that wasted money or whatever. They don't want those replaced with DEF that are more effective at stopping COVID because they did not care if COVID killed people. And the issue too, and I know we don't talk about COVID nearly as much as we used to. Obviously for years of TDR, that was our daily show effectively. They don't accept that it was bad. 
They don't. They'll temporarily accept that it was bad if they think that that'll briefly hurt Biden. But then they go right back to they don't think that it was bad. They think less should have been done. They don't believe that these people died fundamentally. Occasionally, they will think that these people died if they think that they can blame that on China leaking it. Then those people died and China killed them. But other than that, they don't accept that it was a bad thing. They don't accept like it was the worst domestic disaster of our entire lives. Indisputable to anyone with three functioning neurons to rub together. <laughs> and they don't accept anything, any of this, any of the reality of what happened in the past few years. They wish that more people had died. They honestly don't care. And that is insane. Look at this. They're they're teaming up. They're, they're teaming up with uh, RFK Jr.'s anti-vax nonprofit, the Children's Health Defense. They've got these experts who, uh, let's see. We've got. Uh, I don't even care. I don't even care. <laughs> they're crazy people. They they honestly believe the disease comes from Satan. What's the difference? This is what government becomes when either people aren't paying attention, or even if they are. The guardrails against democracy are so effectively in place that you still end up with crazy people. Thanks to redistricting, which affects not only the Congress, but also state legislatures. This is what you get. And anyway, I think they should quick re, final point for you. I think they should recuse themselves. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.